Hey guys, welcome back to the Syntho YouTube channel. If you're ready to write some killer bass lines, you're in the right place. My name is Josh Baker. My track's been played by Dr. Jamie Jones, Chris Dussy, Coulter, and many more. And today I'm gonna to share with you my favorite ways to get them bass lines grooving. So let's go. Syntho. So in a previous video on the channel, I created this drum groove. So the first thing we need to do is locate a good sound. From my 10 years experience as a producer, I can tell you now you cannot polish a turd. So finding the right sound to begin with is gonna be essential. There are obviously many plugins you can purchase, but today I'm gonna to use Ableton. I'm gonna go for this basic FM house bass. So if I show you what it sounds like, we've got that. Nice classic sound. And what we do is drag it on to our MIDI track. So it's always good now to pick what scale you're going to work in. If you're not familiar with music theory, a really easy hack is just to go to MIDI effects and go to our scale function here. And if you hit this, we can then go down to minor, which is here. I drag this to the start of our MIDI track. Most house tracks on the vibe I'm into and probably you as well, are in minor so if you stick with this you're going to be in pretty safe hands and what you can do is change the bass note to whatever scale you work you want to work in what i usually do is turn this off and go into our track so create a midi track and do a note at c3 for example press play and that is obviously very high pitch so what we need to do is go down a few octaves so we can do this by pressing shift on the arrow down and i'll take us to c2 down again c1 down again, C0. So I think that's a bit too low and C1's a bit high. So what we'll do is try and find a note in between them two, which I like. Let's press play here. G sounds pretty good. So I wanna use G as my root note. So if you click back here, change the bass to G. And now every note I play will be in the G minor scale. I do actually know the notes that are in the G, so I'll be okay. But this is great for anyone who is not so familiar with music theory. So, what I want to do is choose a nice little pattern. I'm going to duplicate this to be two and I'm going to just listen to the whole track playing together. And note length is always helpful. So I'm going to do a little note here. Sounds pretty good straight away. So I'm gonna double click again here. I feel like we could do some. So adding extra short notes and then some long notes is really gonna add a bit of variation to the grooves. So we could do this. So once we've got a nice sound, a nice pattern, we may want to manipulate the actual sound itself. So with the Ableton stuff, you get all these parameters here, which you can mess around with. I'm actually gonna open up the synth and we can look at this. So I'm always looking at the filter, see what it sounds like if we close the frequencies or open them up. So let's watch this. Solo this with the kick. Nice, so we can open up the frequencies a bit more. And I'm actually gonna take out some of these. Don't be afraid to mute things you've previously used in your track as sometimes they can serve a purpose to get to a certain point, 
but at that certain point you don't want to get rid of other things and it can open up the possibility for more sounds so now we've got this i want to add some swing to the bass so click in here let's get the same swing which is on the rest of the track and by the way some people always go oh you need to press commit which is this button i believe you do not need to press commit with the groove is there it applies it to the track if you click commit it will then move the notes and show you what the swing's actually done but you don't actually have to press commit so now we've got this i want to add some sidechain i'm going to recommend using this plugin called kickstart by nicky romero most of what i'm going to show you if not all is going to be inside ableton today but this is only about 9.99 so if you're serious about music production, check it out. What it does is dips the bass line depending on the amount of mix percentage on here. So if we go for 100%, it's going to dip loads when the kick drum hits. But if we reduce it, so that's no side chain. That's 100%. So something around there would be nice. And it just means they will not clash. So now we are happy with our sound and our melody, it's time to add some processing individually. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I do on the majority of my tracks. If I'm honest, I don't do a ton of processing on a bass, but we can add some nice little bits and bobs for some extra flavor. So what I'm gonna show you is adding a bit of delay. So if we put this delay here, this may not work on this style bass line, but I'll show you what I do. So if you click solo, turn the dry wet, almost nothing can you just feel that extra bit of space i think this is very much an underutilized technique with the old bass lines and we can mess around with the width i think when it's wider it sounds better And another effect I may add on the bass is some saturation. So if we go to the Ableton Saturator, in Ableton Saturator, we can click this arrow button and look at some of the presets. Warm up lows, let's check this out. See, that's quite aggressive. What I would do is just bring the dry wet down, turn it off. But honestly, I do not really advise going hard on distortion and saturation on your low end. Maybe some subtle um, addition of harmonics, but if you go too hard, you might end up ruining the sound. So all this, you can see the amount of dry wet I've got on both sounds. Just tiny little sprinkles uh, and it'll add, add some nice flavor, but nothing crazy. So what we will add next is some EQ. Let's go onto here, EQ8. You may wanna put your EQ earlier in the chain. Let's put this after the compression. But what I would say is maybe cut off things below 20 hertz. And if you wanted to roll off some mid-range, you could do this. But honestly, if the bass sounds good, do not start taking away some of the nice sounds in the high and the mid-range. I wouldn't be doing any corrective kind of kick and bass EQ at this stage, which would be done in the mix down process. This will just slow you down and may actually end up killing some of the vibes. So. Let's not do any of that right now. So what I will add to the bass is a utility, a utility that will make the bass mono. So there's a preset called bass mono. If you hit this, it will now make frequencies below 120 in mono. So if you add anything like delay, this can be really useful actually. So if you put this here, and it's just gonna make sure that the low frequencies are straight down the middle of the speakers. So something we may want to do next is add some modulation. I like to do this with the Max LFO. So if we search this, you'll need Max for Live for this. We can then put this on and click Map and map this to a parameter. I'll put this at the start of the chain so you can see it a bit better. We could map this to the frequency here. So when we click Map there and this, watch what it does. So let's turn down the rate and let's turn the offset this way. So you can see what it's doing to it so the depth let's put the depth really low let's move the rate quite quick and let's just solo the bass Again, we might 
I'll just put a bit less rate. Let's turn this off. And this, it's very subtle, but these subtle additions to the creative process are all gonna add up and in the end create something really unique. So this LFO little trick, I'd recommend doing this on as many things as possible. So guys, I hope you found that useful from writing the bass lines to processing them and adding modulation, all of it's gonna help you take your music to the next level. If you'd like to learn more from myself and other world-class producers, check out Syntho via the link attached to this video and we will help you release on the labels of your dreams. In the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all very soon. Peace. Syntho.